All right, guys, I'm out here working on the 85K10 today. We're doing a seat swap, and um, yeah, I'm just going to kind of walk through where we are. Um, I posted a picture. I'll uh, put it up in the upper left-hand corner of this video, but um, I got a seat out of a 2010 Super Duty, um, and I'm in the process of mocking it up inside the K10 here. So I took the old bench seat out, it's right over here. Um, had a little tear, <clears throat> nothing too crazy, but a few tears in the seat. And uh, honestly, I was looking for something a little bit more comfortable um, and something that had the integrated cup holder. So that's uh that's where I found the Super Duty seats are the same width as the old square body seats, or just about the same width. Um, <clears throat> so, basically, these tracks are the, uh, the original tracks from the square body. And uh, they mounted up. on the rear just kind of like this so they sat there there were three bolts holding them to the frame of the seat uh, so what I did is I took these off and uh, <clears throat> mounted them up in their stock location which you can see here and originally, when I, uh, which I'll show you here in a few minutes, but when I took the um, the frame off of the Super Duty truck, I welded it up, um, well actually bolted it up, uh, kind of centered on this frame. And what I found is the, uh, the seat sat way too far back. It actually was hitting the rear of the cab here so <clears throat> what I ended up having to do in order to get it forward you can see here is I cut the brace off the rear of the original tracks and I welded it in order to give me a location where I can bolt which this bolt will be coming out of there um, but where I can bolt the rear of the forward seat here and then I have two additional mounts here that I've welded in the front and basically <clears throat> what I did is I set the Ford frame in here kind of determined where I wanted my mounts drilled through um, and these are drilled and tapped uh, all the way through the frame and basically I put some bushings here to give me clearance over top of this spring right here so those will support um, the the bottom of uh, the Ford seat and give me enough clearance to clear so I can still move uh, the seat forward and back so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the frame back in here just so you can kinda see what I did I did have to modify uh, some of the brackets <clears throat> on the side of the Ford seat in order to fit it properly. Um, but yeah, let me, uh, I'll get that. All right, guys, here. so I, I've at least got the frame in place for the Super Duty seats. Um, so as you can see, this part here flips out. And basically, um, these three locations uh, here, here, and back here, which I don't have a bolt through yet. Um, but those are the spots where I decided to uh, mount up the frame. So these bolt through those bushings um, that I showed you on the tracks. And then this is that uh, rear piece that I cut off of back here. And basically, this part that uh, the spring, the return spring attaches to, was originally out over here. So what I had to do is pull that return spring off 
and flip it over to the other side, attach it here, and then I knock this down flat um, in order to get it out of the way because of the seats that I have, actually um, the base of them fold up. So with these sticking up, um, they were interfering with the seat folding up. So I don't know, let's see if I can get a light down here. <clears throat> you can kind of see there's the bolt protruding through the bottom of the track. So I tapped all the way through that bushing that's inside there and then um, all the way down through the tracks. So, and ultimately, I mean, this is my hopefully final test fitment. I've already done this once. Like I said, the seats were too far back. Um, so what I plan on doing is if everything mocks up like I want it to, um, I will be pulling all of this back out cleaning up all the welds, uh, painting everything black. Um, I did want to show you, so these uh, braces for the seats were hitting the cab floor through here. So there's originally um, material in the center brace right through here. So I had to cut that out in order to clear the floor. And then also both the side braces. So on that side over there, and then this side here, what I had to do was to give myself some clearance, I had to cut it because it actually was hitting um, the cab floor here. So I basically had to cut the bottom of this brace off and then slice it up. Uh, seat belt's in the way. And slice the clearance here. That way when it slides back, it doesn't interfere with the rear portion of the seat. Um, so yeah, and I think, you know, these tracks are uh, identical for all of the square bodies. Well, almost identical. Um, before 81, I believe the lever, you can see it right there, uh, actually is on the uh, side of the seat versus being in the front. But otherwise, I believe the tracks mount up exactly the same. So um, this Super Duty base should work. Uh, for all of these square bodies out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the seats in here, bolt those all up, and make sure everything is mocking up like I want it to. I have some of the seats sitting over here. You can see just kind of scattered around the garage. But So we dyed these. These were originally black. Um, I dyed them garnet red to match the interior in the truck. Uh, I actually have a separate video on how we went through and did that. But what I'll do for now is uh, get them in the truck and then uh, I will show you fitment once I'm done with that. All right, guys, let me uh, kind of show you. This is my final test fitment of the seats in the truck. Um, they actually sit in there really nice. Um, I, I got up in there. I mean... Uh, compared to the original bench seat, which kind of pushed you forward in the seat, these actually recline back. Um, so they're a lot more comfortable to sit in. Now, I'm not the uh, tallest person in the world. I'm only about 5'9". So, um, you know, they sat just about perfect for me. For somebody that's super tall, uh, it might be a little bit tighter uh, clearance in there. But overall... I must say, you know, these are, these seats turned out really nice. And the color, you know, it matches pretty well. I've really got to clean the seats because they've been sitting in the shop for a couple weeks. So there's a ton of dust and stuff on them. Um, and of course, I got to reinstall the center console. But I'll be pulling everything back out of here and uh, re, uh, you know, cleaning everything, um, cleaning up some of the welds painting the frames. I actually have covers that go here, the, the original ones for the Ford. I actually have them back here. So you can see these have already been painted uh, to match. <clears throat> so eventually they'll sit up in there. That'll cover uh, pretty much all of that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think everything turned out pretty well, honestly. 
So what I'll do is I will rip everything back out of here um, and get it cleaned up, reinstall it, and uh, I'll do another video once I get things kind of finalized and drive in the truck for a little while with these in here. So the biggest thing um, is that where I had mocked the seats up, I still had to slide the seats forward just a little bit in order to have the uh, rear of the seat sit all the way back. You can see it's touching the cab right there. So um, you can have the seats slide back further than this. Actually, the tracks will move it back further, but the uh, seat lock will not lock in place unless you slide it forward some. So they'll, they'll sit uh, straighter up rather than leaning back like they are now. Um, so yeah, that's the, the one caveat to this. So it's been a few days since I gave an update um, on the bench seat swap inside my 85 K10. So um, basically what I've done since the last video is the stock square body tracks. Um, I took them out, uh, cleaned them up a little bit, put some black paint on them. Uh, well, I put down a coat of etch primer after cleaning them and prepping them a little bit with uh, just some 180 sandpaper. Um, but yeah, came back, put a coat of etch primer on them, painted both of them. You see the other one over there. Uh, and then uh, reinstalled them inside the truck here. So uh, I know when I pulled the, uh, the, the original seat out, it was just grade five hardware in here. Um, I don't know if that is factory for these trucks or not, or if, you know, at one point somebody pulled the seat out and just threw whatever in there. So I, uh, I went ahead and put all grade eight stuff in here and added a washer. There was no washer originally here, so it's all grade eight hardware uh, in the truck. And I threw a little bit of Loctite uh, on the threads, just some blue thread locker. That way, if I do have to pull it back apart, I can, but um, seeing how these four bolts, this one here, here and same on the other side over there. Um, those four bolts, the only thing holding uh, the seat to the cab. And that's the way Chevy did it um, originally with these trucks. So I'm keeping it that way, but um, yeah, just, uh, just wanted to upgrade the hardware and uh, make sure those bolts aren't gonna back out of the, uh, the threads. The other thing I did, so uh, I had done a little bit of drilling inside of here, so I vacuumed underneath the seat, it was a little bit dirty, and uh, I also flipped the seat belts around. So what I found the last time, or at least originally when I pulled the seats out, uh, the seat belts were facing the opposite way. And when I put the new seat in, uh, they just didn't line up correctly. So uh, I found flipping them around uh, actually works better for this seat. So, and the last thing I did is I reattached the cable that connects from the driver's side handle over there to release the tracks. So basically, um, at this point, I'm ready to get the base of the Super Duty seat back in here, get it lined up, and uh, once I do that, I will, uh, I will, uh, catch back up with you guys then. So let me get it back in here. I got the base of the Super Duty seat back in. See it's in place here. Um, and from the last time, uh, you know, I videotaped this in here. Basically what I've done is I went ahead and painted all of this surface, same way I did the, uh, those bottom tracks. So I cleaned up underneath here with a wire wheel to get um, all of my cuts clean. Came back with um, some 180 grit sandpaper just to clean it up a little bit better, get it prepped for 
paint. Um, shot some etch primer over all the bare metal and just took some gloss black and sprayed it over it. So the bottom of it, all those bare metal spots are now coated. And uh, what I also did is I added a bolt through this brace. So originally the way these, uh, these Super Duty seats are set up is there is um, a bolt that comes back here, goes down into the, the cab. Um, and there's also one that extends off the front up here. Um, since I'm using the stock tracks from the square body, uh, you know, and the seat itself actually attaches to um, this bracing here. So basically I wanted to add some additional support onto uh, this material. So what I did is I, I drilled and mounted a hole all the way through just to sandwich these two pieces together. It's got a lock nut on the bottom side. Um, and that should add some additional support here. And I did that on um, the other side over there as well. And uh, yeah, so, so all the bolts are in now. Uh, this thing's pretty secure in there. And uh, basically now I'm at the point where I can throw the seats back in, uh, put all my trim pieces on, and kind of get everything finalized in here. The one thing that I probably will do down the road, the good thing about these seats is, you know, it's super easy to pull them in and out. It's just a few bolts. Um, but what I might do is add a piece of metal back here uh, just to kind of strengthen up this back portion. Because you can see, you know, the seats are going to actually be attached here and extend over to that brace and then, of course, over to the next one. But um, there is some flex here in this and like I said there originally was a bolt back here supporting this so um, but since I've got to or I have this set up um, to where the seat can slide back and forth it's kind of difficult to add support against the cab um, so what I'd like to do possibly is uh, add a piece of metal right inside of here and weld it to both of these uh, both of these portions and that way that'll add some additional support for that. In the center here you don't really need it. Uh, there's enough material left there but on both the ends that's probably something that I will come back and do but for the time being what I'd like to do is um, get everything inside the truck and drive it a little bit just to uh, just to make sure that you know, this is definitely what I want. So before I go crazy and um, kind of finalize everything, I'd like to uh, really drive the truck with this seat for a little bit. So that is my plan. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think that kind of sums this portion of the build up. Um, one thing I did want to mention, um, I know I didn't really document how I drilled and mounted all of this. Um, so basically, uh, what I did to get this platform centered inside here is I took a, uh, a two by four, put it up against the outside of the rocker, um, made sure it's level. You can also use a level to do this, but um, and extend it all the way up and then run your tape off of this edge to that two by four. Do the same thing on the other side and uh, you know you want to get the same distance from there to the 2x4 to kind of center this thing and then uh, on the front here I just pulled a measurement off the front uh, of this platform to the end of the track on both sides made sure that um, both of these were equal once I got everything centered I drilled these front two holes um, down through the bushings, through the tracks. The biggest thing you got to watch out for, um, as I kind of mentioned, I think in the earlier video, is uh, the the levers on either side um, for adjusting the tracks. You just got to watch out for. So, but yeah, drill these two holes once you get everything centered, um, and I 
tapped all the way down through the bushings, through the track, welded everything up. And then from there, you can place this rear bracket where you want it. Um, so, uh, yeah, and then from there, you're good to go. I, I uh, put a nut on the underside of this. It's kind of hard to get to, but nothing too crazy. Um, can't really see it from here. I don't know if I can get a shot of it. <clears throat> I'll just put a lock nut up under there. And yeah, that's it. Like I said, I reinforced this portion. Um, and I think things are good to go. So I will get the seats in here, get everything bolted up. It's pretty straightforward. And uh, I will do an update uh, once I have everything back together. So I've been driving on the seats. For a couple weeks now um, and I have to say uh, seats are a lot more comfortable um, I definitely recommend for somebody who's uh, who's looking for a change from the original spring seats um, the bottom of the seat here does fold up you see and of course Everything works. Kind of difficult to do one-handed, but there's that. And then also, this portion of the seat will fold down. So you still do have some storage back here behind the seat. Yeah, I uh, I definitely like them. I would recommend. I would say the biggest thing is if you're a fairly tall person, you might have to figure out a different way to mount these to the cab because they do sit fairly high. Um, <clears throat> I'd say if you're six feet or over, you're probably going to be looking at lowering these seats some. Uh, but for me... I'm, um, you know, only 5'9", so they sit just about perfect where they are. So, that really wraps it up. Thanks, guys, for watching the install of my 2010 Ford Super Duty seats in the 85 K10.